Ion asking, currently there's a lot of media attention on the Yemen war due to the Houthis attack on the UAE because some Indian citizens died too. Uh, but there's no attention on the humanitarian crisis of people in Yemen. Um, I'm assuming Ayan is talking about media, Indian media attention on it, um, because I know Ayan is uh, no, from India. No, there is a lot of attention on it beyond India, because this was an attack on no, the no, UAE. Uh, yes, but the, yeah. the prioritization of the Indian citizens is why I'm saying that, but no even if it's not even if it's um because it's like multiple countries involved now even if it's not just india like this makes it a much bigger deal right like he's dragging in other countries that was not involved in this conflict into the conflict as well right so it's it, it it will make it like internationally a much bigger deal now right because of what happened um what, what's the question oh. uh um it's it's more of a comment about, you know, the people are talking about the UAE and the situation, but they're not actually okay. talking about okay. the UAE's involvement in Yemen or actually the cost, the human cost of what's happening in Yemen. I mean, what this is what we expect, about, though. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Go on. What do you think about what I've read? Analysts are saying that this would not have been possible without capabilities gifted to them by Iran. I mean, of course, like, for, okay, a couple of things. First of all, the fact that the humanitarian part is not getting covered, like, like, of course, like, w we know that, like, we expect that. It's like, okay, so second of all, there is no weapon manufacturing, you know, industry within Yemen, okay? These, there's no facilities that could produce these missiles. Like, people are like, oh, these are coming from Iran. And I'm like, you think? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? like obviously, right? So, like, this is not even a question anymore. Okay. Um, thirdly, um, there's two theories, right? Two prevailing theories right now about these attacks. One is whether or not. Okay, so pe people don't understand how proxies work, right? People think like if you're a proxy of another big, bigger power, that means that everything you do is completely ordered from the top and you're just following what the commands are coming from the top and you're just doing it directly right um that's not how it works right there's different degrees of um loyalty and accepting commands so and it could change right so how much how much a, a power has control over its proxy is not a black and white thing and it also can change right um and also sometimes the commands are not very direct. Like there's, you know, they are like, the, a suggestion is thrown in the ether somewhere and then what proxy just catches that? Like it's like a, you know, it's, uh, or I, and, and how and how they interpret it and how they go about, um, you know, executing such a suggestion is like anyone's guess, right? But when it comes to the Houthis and this attack, right? So whether or not this was a, a command from Tehran or not, um, depends uh, depends on uh, okay so there's two theories right um so we have the nuclear talks right now happening in v uh, vienna right um and some people are suggesting that this might have been not a command from tehran this might this might be a fear that the houthis have that they're being given up their support for them is going to they're going to be thrown under the bus as part of the negotiation in Vienna, like they're thinking like maybe if the deals go through and as part of like the part of the things that Iran, uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran has to give is lack, less support for different groups, including Houthis, right? And I, some people are saying maybe Houthis were doing this not because uh, not because they were commanded by, uh, by the Islamic Republic of Iran, but because they wanted to show that they can still bite, especially given that the UAEs were like defeating them so badly in recent fights, right? And they just wanted to show like, you know what, even even like we're gonna, like you can't just, like, there are gonna be consequences to you. Like we can, you know, you can't just ignore us. Like, you know, we could we could mess you up, right? Um, that's one theory. And that the people who support that theory are saying like, if you look at the UAE, they're not like coming aggressively against Iran right um so why why wouldn't they like they might be suggesting like maybe the uae people 
they have this understanding. Because the UAE people have recently tried to become closer to Iran, right? So, um, and Iran has been showing to be willing to have some negotiations, you know, with even Saudi Arabia recently. Um, so people are like, what is happening? Like you're, you're trying to negotiate with them and you're also attacking them using the Houthis. And people, people are, some people are suggesting that um, maybe, maybe this was in Iran. Maybe the reason why you're not hearing from the Gulf countries going aggressively against Iran is because they understand that the Houthis were not following commands from Tehran who did this, right? That's one theory. Some people are saying, no, that's not true. Um, this was a command from the Islamic Republic and they just want to have a stronger hand um, you know, have more leverage, right? So they're going through Vienna talks, and yes, they are having more talks with Saudi Arabia and, and want to get closer to UAE, but they also want to have an attack like this just so that people remember the consequences of not negotiating with them, right? Maybe in the Vienna talks, maybe it's a reminder to the people on the other side of the talks in Vienna that look, things are going to become really messy if you don't appease us, right? So these are the two theories. I have no idea which one is correct, okay? Um, but yeah, these are the two theories. Uh, one last thing is that UAE, <clears throat> by the way, my voice, uh, UAE has become very, um, rich partially because it was supposed to be a place in the Middle East where wars didn't happen, right? Like it benefited from being, UAE benefited from being part of the Middle East where, like being around all these oil rich countries and people with so much wealth, so much money, wanting to park their money somewhere and everywhere else being unstable and then UAE being the stable part. So everything going in that, that's why they benefited from all these money pouring in there, right? That's how they became so rich, okay? Because they were part of the country that was not, had, didn't have wars, right? And now you have a direct attack on them, right? Um, and, and there, you know, there are threats to, there are, there are so many, um, the, in Iranian media, there was like cartoons of like, you know, your Burj Al Khalifa is going to get, like we're gonna, it would, it would be a shame to see uh, missiles coming at Burj Al Khalifa. Like there were oh threats coming. Yeah, there were, there were threats of like all your glass buildings in Dubai um they're all gonna like fall like they're, they're all, they all look very shaky and, uh, <laughs> and like and i actually do your, hate those running. buildings i think they're ugly and stupid um, okay no but don't say but that not not, not for the type. reasons that they hate that. Okay. <laughs> yeah no, yeah don't say that right now that might be people might misinterpret that anyway so that's all, all of that what do you think <coughs> what do i think about this yeah Oh, I don't really have any particular thoughts on this. I just thought it was really interesting to see news stories that came out about how Israel was going to oh. offer their support to the UAE. Oh, that's this. actually that was interesting to me. I was like, that is actually a very good point. Good, good, good point. Good point. Um, I was asking, what do you think? Because I was just fishing for a compliment over my analysis. That's what I was trying to do, but it didn't work. Well, what do you think about Israel's involvement in this now? Oh, um. I mean, it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, it was pretty interesting. It was a pretty bold move. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah. And, Anyways, let's move. But if you're looking for a compliment for your analysis, I'll give it to you because uh, who yeah. else do I come to? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. If you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.